Howdy folks, welcome back to the World of Tanks 8.6 test server with the mighty jingles. Today I'm going to take you for a drive around the new map, uh, Sacred Valley it's called. But before we do that, there's a couple of points I wanted to address that were brought up in the first video. Um, I had a damn good laugh at artillery's expense when I saw the stats of the new artillery guns. However, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, T-92, American Tier 10 artillery. There we go. 0.92 accuracy. I had a good laugh at that. <laughs> well, what's actually happening here? Um, I mentioned in the previous video that um, the, the bell curve, if you like, for the way shot dispersal is calculated has has changed and you're going to see less deviation towards the outer edges of your aiming circle than you were previously used to more of your shots are going to gravitate towards the center of the aiming point than before and what wargaming have basically done is that they felt that that would make artillery too accurate if they used existing artillery accuracy ratings and gave them the same shot dispersal so what they have done to compensate is decrease the accuracy of artillery and that's why when you look at something like the t92 and you suddenly see a ridiculous accuracy number like 0.92 in effect because artillery is also getting the shot dispersal change to the mechanics the 0.92 accuracy is just there to rebalance the artillery and in effect you're going to see no better and no worse accuracy than before so on paper it looks terrible 0.94 accuracy you're thinking oh my god my artillery's been nerfed to death i'm never going to hit anything again well yeah but your shots are going to go more where you aim them anyway due to the way everybody's dispersal mechanics have changed so you're not going to see any real change that's the intention anyway they might need to fine tweak it a little bit more but that's the reason for the ridiculous numbers that you're seeing on the accuracy rating of uh, artillery pieces Second thing I wanted to bring up before we get onto the old map test was a lot of people when they saw the research trees Where are we? Here we go. Particularly the American one saw the Easy 4 Sherman available for 1500 gold and immediately started jumping for joy. Calm down guys. The Easy 4 Sherman is always available for 1500 gold on the test server. The reason is on the Russian server it's a 1500 gold premium tank. Anybody can buy it right here next to the T14 in the tech tree, only on the Russian server. And because the test server is a clone of the Russian server, every time you get on the test server, the EZ4 is available for sale. That does not mean that the EZ4 is coming out in patch 8.6 for everybody. It's just test server only. So sorry to burst your bubble, guys, but don't get too excited about that. That does not mean that we're going to see the easy force uh, for sale on the EU server, the North American server, the Southeast Asian server, and so on and so on. It's just a test server thing, because the test server is a clone of the Russian server, and the easy 4 has always been for sale on the Russian server. So, sorry about that, fellas, but there it is. So anyway, on to the purpose of today's video. It's going to be quite a short one today. The new map. Right, here it is, the new map. This is Sacred Valley. It's set in Korea. And uh, this is the first, my first look at it. I've set up a training room with Eddie. Eddie's somewhere on the other side of the map in, in his ELC. I'm driving this stinky little T21 around. And we're going to have a drive around, look for scouting spots, see where artillery can hide, and just uh, have a look around the map. See if we can figure out what sort of games we're going to have here. So I've started the northwestern spawn. First thing we're going to do is we're going to scoot straight south and check out this flanking route around towards the enemy base. I must say it's a very, very pretty map. You can see that uh, patch of high ground over there on the right that dominates the centre of the map. Gonna link up with Eddie at first and then see if we can find a way up there. Because initially, at least, that does look like a very, very promising scouting spot. This doesn't look too bad either. I 
As you can see, it's not that big a map. We're approaching the entrance to the enemy base already. And there he is. Now this is quite deceptive because there is a path up here. Or what appears to be a path up here, but this actually just skirts around the other side of the hill. And uh, we just couldn't find a way up. It's not like the the lighthouse on the cliff map. that You can definitely get up there. And I certainly suspect that at least the first couple of times people get this map in rotation, the, the sides of this hill are going to be littered with the burning wrecks of dumbasses <laughs> who got themselves killed and stuck while trying to get up on top of that. I, I, th if there's a way up there, I couldn't find it. But I'm sure that's not going to stop the window lickers from trying. I get the feeling that this hill is just going to be one big retard magnet where all the idiots go to die. So that should be fun. I mean, this bit here looked kind of promising, but... Nah. You might be able to get up enough speed just to get up to that first part, but... That bit on the right just there. But there's nowhere to go once you're there. And it's bare-ass ground, there's no cover. You'll just get shot to crap. So, the hill is an idiot magnet. No good will come of it. Don't try to go up there. So let's have a look around at the rest of the map. See what we can see. Now, one thing you're going to note is that there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of soft cover. It's quite deceptive. And when I say soft cover, I mean stuff that isn't necessarily going to stop a shell. I mean, there's lots of hard cover here as well. But it's all destructible. All of these single-story houses, you can drive through them. All these low walls, you can drive through them. There's loads of bushes to hide behind. It's going to be an utter nightmare on this map, chasing down the last enemy tank. If they want to hide, there's all sorts of places for them to do it. Now, this is one of the ways into the southeastern enemy base. This is the, this is the obvious route. It's the main road in. And there you can see the flag. Now this looks like the obvious tank destroyer spot. Oh, that's not the way up. Oh, there it is. Eddie's found it. So you've got this very small hill here at the exit from the southeastern base. And this looks like the spot where your tank destroyers are going to sit. Uh, you know, if there's no KV-1s already taking the position. So you're either going to find that this is going to be another retard magnet spot, or it's going to be where your tank destroyers park themselves. But, again, it's, uh, you know, there's not a massive amount of cover up here. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just bushes. And the second you fire, you're going to give your position away. There's nowhere on there for you to sit 15 metres behind a bush and, uh, and let your scouts up front, pick your targets for you. So if you were to flank around to the eastern side of the map, this is the way in to the southeastern base, over this bridge. Or, you can come through the plain and go under the bridge, and there's a lot more cover heading up that, uh, that ravine. Anybody trying to shoot down at you, stands a good chance of falling off the edge of the ridge. Now what I wanted to test was to see if instead of just barreling over that bridge, which is totally open to fire, if you could come along here. And it looks like Wargaming have thought of that. Now, you can actually get down here, but the chances are you're probably going to take damage doing it. Because those rocks right there look like they've been put there specifically to make it hard for you to exploit this opportunity to get around this back road into the southeastern base. 
you can go around the rocks but there you go took my tracks off Eddie has a go and he succeeds but only using me to slow himself down I dare say it's possible to get down there without ripping the tracks off your light tanks but it's uh, it's dodgy and obviously you're going to be incredibly vulnerable while you're stuck there so that's an option but it's not without its risks but if you pull it off, or if you just come under the bridge without taking any hits and drive up this ravine, this is the back road into the southeastern base. And that looks like an artillery camping spot if ever I saw one. So let's have a look around and see where we can expect Artie to be hiding. So there's a spot there. A spot here behind these, these huts. There's another spot over here in the bushes behind that building. And there's a good spot back here. If ever you're hunting down the last artillery on the enemy team, I guarantee you they're going to be back here. And you can imagine the kind of trouble you're going to have coming around trying to root out something like an Object 261 with his gun pointing down, <laughs> down towards this, uh, the mouth of this canyon. So that should be fun. So that's the southeastern base. So let's have a look up the uh, the western flank, see what we can see up there. There's so many hiding spots for artillery over here. There's another one. Good bit of rock there shielding you on the right hand side. Perhaps you could park up in these bushes and the trees. But you'll notice that the map itself is actually quite open. The only real terrain feature you've got in the middle of the map is that hill that we couldn't get up. But just look at the cover. There's, there's hard and soft cover all over this map. Now, it's good news and it's bad news. You're going to need to be careful because artillery is watching and if they see these, these walls and buildings getting crushed, they're going to know something's coming and they're going to be able to point out to their team where the attack's coming from. And I just get the impression that this map is going to be fantastic for scout tanks. A good scout on this map is going to be worth their weight in gold. Finding the spots where you can observe the battlefield while staying in cover. And having a team that's smart enough to be able to take advantage of the information that you're relaying to them... Um, uh, this this is going to be a great map for scout tanks. There's so much cover. It's just not... It, oh. I think this is going to be a really good medium tank map as well. But I think it's going to be highly dependent on how much artillery is available. Oh, speaking of which, here's a sneaky little back road into the northwestern base. Seeing if I could get up there. You can, but it's from around here. So, and there's another another route, or if you're American, a route. Perhaps this is a spot for artillery to sit at. Bit risky though. Uh, you'd need your flank secure, otherwise the first thing a scout runs into when they come around here, or a fast medium, is going to be you. But if you could park up here. That would be an, another decent tank destroyer spot. Good view of the whole northern side of the map there. So here's the uh, the western flank approach into the northeastern base. This wooded area here, excellent cover for artillery. Good ambush spot for uh, defending tank destroyers to get the first shot in as you come into the base as well. More artillery camping spots at the back here. Scumbag heaven, this map. I would not like to be a heavy tank on this map. I think this is definitely our artillery, light tanks and medium tank paradise. 
Well, that's not necessarily true. I think that's going to depend on how much artillery is in play. Because this map is so open and there's so much cover, um, which sounds weird, but as you can see, there are not that many big terrain features other than that hill over there on the left. So there isn't that much artillery cover other than, you know, not being seen by artillery. There's plenty of soft cover and hard cover, destructible cover, that will allow you to move forward without being seen if the enemy scouts aren't doing their job. But if you do get spotted, you're completely open to artillery fire just about everywhere on this map. And I think if, if you play this map on games with three or four or more artillery on each side, see, all this stuff is destructible. There you go. I'm in artillery cover. Bang. I turned. I've just ruined my cover. Everybody can see me. I'm dead. <laughs> Playing this map with a lot of artillery is going to be awful. It, it's going to be absolutely horrible. N nobody is going to want to move. On the other hand, uh, playing this map with one or no artillery is going to be fantastic. And I think medium tanks with good scouts are going to have an absolutely fantastic time on this map in games with very little artillery. I do like this map. I wish it was a little bigger, but you know, you can't have everything. So there you go. That's the new map, Sacred Valley, set in Korea. I think it's got the potential to be very, very, very good, but I think that is totally going to depend on A, how much artillery is in play, and B, how good your scouts are. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, swift little map preview, quite a short video this time. haven't actually seen this map in the battle rotation on the test server yet, which is quite bizarre. You'd think that they'd be pushing it heavily in the rotation, given that it's one of the new features of patch 8.6, but I haven't seen it yet. When I do, I'll try to get a good game on it, and we'll, uh, we'll show you how this thing plays out in a battle. Until then, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.